Hello friends, welcome back to VMS Academy. In today's session, we are going to talk about what is the runtime fabric, what are the you know operating models available with the runtime fabric. Okay. So before moving on to the session, I encourage everyone to please subscribe the channel. Okay, hit the like button, hit the bell icon so that you get you know notifications of upcoming videos. Okay, let's start. So what is runtime fabric? Runtime fabric is basically a, a different model of the runtime chain. Okay. So it comes in between our standalone new runtime and in the cloud of uh, new runtime. Okay. So cloud of is completely hosted by you know uh, the new soft. Standalone is completely hosted by the customer. So runtime fabric comes in between. Okay. There we will we'll, uh, you know uh, take some services from the new soft, some services will be controlled or you know uh, taken care by the customer. Okay. So let's See how runtime fabric works. Okay, so it's basically a uh, you know a clustered container service. Okay, and it is completely hosted by you know you know uh, basically by customer. So customer has to. So this basically runtime fabric runs on customer hosted infrastructure. So it can work on AWS, Azure, Google, virtual machines, or even bare metal service. Okay, so. It requires the main important thing is it works only with the control plane, which is hosted by MuleSoft. Okay, it won't work with the control plane which is hosted by customer. In case of PC, okay, private cloud edition, it won't work with you know uh, you know runtime fabric. Okay, so it's basically a part of you know any point platform. So it has to have the control plane hosted by MuleSoft. Okay. So there are two deployment options available, or I can say two flavors of runtime fabric available. So one is the appliance model, where the new software will give you software. That software can be installed anywhere. Okay, it can be a private cloud, it can be a bare metal server, which is your laptop, or it can be virtual machines. Okay. Second flavor of the runtime fabric is the self-managed Kubernetes. Here, we in other words, we call it bring your own Kubernetes. Okay. So here you can install this on the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so the Kubernetes can be provided by you know uh, Microsoft or Amazon or Google. And now in future it's going to support the OpenShift also. Okay, so these are the deployment models available. In nutshell, I say runtime fabric is a runtime frame. Okay, so let's see now. I mean, we'll see the capabilities. We we'll compare these capabilities with both the deployment options. Okay, so we have our appliance model. We have our Kubernetes model. Okay, so let's first start with the with, you know uh, the Kubernetes Docker. Okay, so when you talk about appliance, appliance for flavor of RPM, it includes all the Kubernetes clusters and Docker's inside the software itself. So that means the software provided by the new soft, it will have its own Kubernetes, own Docker. You cannot select your own Kubernetes here. You cannot select your Docker's way, you know, versions or you know, variants. You cannot. That is fixed. That will be controlled by new soft. Okay. So if you talk about the bring your own Kubernetes, here you get only RPM software. You need to bring your own Kubernetes. Here we are giving flexibility. You can go for your, you know, in this case, if let's say you already using your Kubernetes, you can install your RTF self Kubernetes RTF variant or you know, flavor on your existing Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so that's the first point where Kubernetes Docker. So here in this in this case, the you know, uh, let's just me bring the let me bring my screen over here. So here, so here it's included. Here we need to bring our own. So we say B Y. So here we are being your open. We are getting flexibility. Okay, here there is no control. So everything will be included with the RTM software. Now Linux distribution. Okay, so Linux distribution here. We are getting, you know, uh, since we are 
we are uh, bringing our own Kubernetes. So all the versions of Linux are supported only. All the, I say, I'll say star basically. Okay. So all the versions are supported only. Okay. But in case of appliance, it, uh, it supports Red Hat, that is RH. Okay. Then it supports CentOS. and it supports Ubuntu. Okay, so these are the, these are here the you know there's a limitation over here in the appliance case. But here when we're talking about self-managed Kubernetes, we are supporting all the versions of the Linux distribution. Okay. Node scaling. Node scaling is a special feature which is not feature of our RTL is a feature of Kubernetes RTL. Okay. So what happens? Okay. So let's say you have, let's say you have three workers. Okay. Worker one, worker two, worker three. And now you have, let's say, license of, let's say, let's say each worker is taking two cores, two cores here, two cores here, two cores here. And you have license of, let's say, eight cores. Okay. Now six cores are consumed. Now let's say, uh, you know, these cores are consumed by all the applications. Now you want to deploy new application, okay? So Kubernetes supports automatically it spins up the new node, okay? And on that node, your application will deploy. And automatically it happens. You don't need to do anything, okay? Automatically. But provided you should have V cores available, then only, so that means, Node auto scaling is supported in self Kubernetes RTL flavor. It's not supported in the appliance appliance model. It's not supported. Okay, so we need to do manual. Now external log forwarding. External log forwarding, forwarding here we need to bring our own. So we need to bring our own log forwarder. But in case of appliance, it's already in built. It's there. Okay, it's included in the software. Now internal load balancer, we call it ingress. Okay, so this ingress is like you know. Uh, here, in case of self Kubernetes, we need to bring out. We need to configure our own. So we, this is our bring our own ingress controller. Here it's included in our appliance model. It's included. Okay. Then comes the any point security. So here you know here we see their H. Hmm. You know, is uh, policies like DOS attacks, you know, DDoS policy, HTTP caching policy, uh, tokenization, detokenization, you know, IP allow this. These policies are not, I mean, this, 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 uh, you know, uh, component itself is not supported by, you know, bring your own Kubernetes. It's not supported, but it's supported by a plan. Okay. So why I am explaining this because when you are suggesting the flavor of RPA to your client, you should know what is available in bring your own Kubernetes and what is available in the client. Okay, and there are flexibilities in you know uh, self Kubernetes uh, you know, flavor. So that's the reason you know clients are moving from appliance to the self Kubernetes flavor of RPA. Okay. Now finally, op center. Okay. So op center is basically a UI where we handle the monitoring okay we handle some services over here and that again is included in the ops you know appliance part it's not included in the cell kubernetes way so it's not included here okay so here we need to you know uh, get it from the if your kubernetes provider is azure or aws or dc we need to use that you know uh, from you know, for example aws AWS or you know uh, sorry AWS or Azure or or let's say Google. We need to use this console and you know make <clears throat> uh, you know implement this off center UI from the this console. But this is already you know included in the appliance. So that's how that is what in the nutshell of we have two operating models and that's really the current time plane uh okay and hope you liked it okay so when you're suggesting any option to your 
you know, your client is keep this in mind that who is supporting what, who is not supporting what. Okay. That's all from this session. Hope you like it. Please hit the like button. Hit the bell like button so that you get, you know, upcoming videos. See in the upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye bye.